From the Ben Pixel Studios in Las Vegas, Nevada, this is Phone Booth Fighting, a free weekly podcast covering the world of mixed martial arts and so far beyond. With that guy, I'm Frank Mayer. He's the two time UFC heavyweight champion, and this guy, Richard Hunter, two time funniest guy of uh, Reno. Check. Naga Silver Medalist. Check. And uh, already a participant in the Wimp to Warrior going for a second go around. That's Hopefully, right. the matchmaker. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to get into Doesn't that. Doesn't decide to fry him with a six foot eight, 30 year old. <laughs> we're going to get into that because we have in studio with us uh, the Wimp to Warrior Las Vegas Brain Trust. Uh, I will uh, describe them collectively. Uh, one familiar face here to the Phone Booth Fighting podcast and our listeners, if you're watching on our Phone Booth Fighting YouTube channel, is a UFC bantamweight Jessica Rose Clark. Jesse Jess, good to see you again. How are Hello. you? Hello. Thank and, you for having me back. Of course. And for primary purposes of this episode the head coach of Wimp to Warrior Las Vegas. Uh, to her left is uh, Scott Viscami who is the North American president of Wimp to Warrior. You know the program's growing when you have to have continental presidents. That's the vice president. You're actually president. Uh, you know like that's when your organization's growing you're like all right each continent's gonna, garage. gonna have to have <laughs> a president. Yeah exactly so welcome Scott. Thanks for having me guys I mean I'm, I'm willing to do anything take out the trash whatever needs to be done I don't care you call me whatever president doesn't matter. I see how you got the job yeah. I like yeah. it I like it yeah uh, whatever uh, whatever uh, the job requires and then uh, to his left is Ty Gwerder who is going to be one of the assistant coaches on uh, this season's Went to Warrior so uh, welcome Ty. Going, we're going to we're going to be talking about fights. Uh, we're going to be talking about Went to Warrior a little bit later on. Uh, Alima Lay McFarlane will uh, be on. I had an early morning chat with her because she's defending her flyweight title over in Bellator, Bellator 220, uh, this weekend. So uh, we'll be getting into all that and a little UFC talk as well. Let's just uh, let's jump right into uh, Went to Warrior though, because uh, for longtime listeners of Phone Booth Fighting, you uh, may have followed my plight last year uh, to have uh, an amateur fight after a five-month program that uh, we did here in Las Vegas and it's about to crank up again this is going to be season three and Jesse you've coached all three seasons right head coach on all yep. three seasons um, if you don't know what this program is went to warrior.com is the website it's a worldwide program so just because we're here in Las Vegas and you're gonna hear us describe this thing uh, no matter what part of the world you're in there's probably an affiliate somewhere near you that is is either about to crank up or just cranking up or something like that. So go to wintowarrior.com to find out more information on that. But in a nutshell, what it is is a program for uh, people who want to have an amateur fighting experience, who have little to no experience, doesn't matter male or female, doesn't matter young to old, uh, tall to short, skinny to fat, whatever it is. Uh, but it is a five-month, five-day-a-week program and you really get the experience it's like uh, fantasy camp for mixed martial arts in a way except that I'll say it's a little more hands-on than that but in the sense of you're gonna get the I, I think over five months I can say you definitely get the feel for what it's like to be a professional fighter that trains every day I'd hope you know? so that's yeah. what my aim is yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. That's our goal to give it as real as it gets go ahead and lean right in there yeah absolutely yeah I think uh, it started getting real real when I started getting punched in the head that was for sure <laughs> that was that was a real day i remember that day um, i remember that day too yeah, of course you do, yeah i don't think of any other sport you can watch right now i mean you could always pay pickup games but as a full-grown adult you're already in your 30s some of us are a little bit farther along yeah <laughs> hello <laughs> but you know imagine if you're watching right now for the first time and you start watching american football and it wasn't yeah. available for you to play when you're in high school and someone actually put together a league saying hey you come down we'll train you for five months and we'll put together a pickup game. And you'll mm -hmm. be able to go ahead and you're really going to get hit. You put on the helmet. You'll feel what it's like to throw a tackle, you know, and try to, you know, to, to evade a tackle or to bury your shoulder. And I can't think of many other really sports at all that allow that really opportunity as a fan to sit there and go, well, I really want to jump in there and actually feel what it feels like to be a fighter. Yeah, especially be able to jump in a cage in front of a big audience as well, I think is a big thing. Yeah, and that's, I, I should say that that's the big finale is that at the end of the five months, there's an actual fight card that takes place in an actual venue and friends and family get invited. And the, the you can, now you don't have to fight, that's optional. Okay. You, know, you want to go through the program, maybe just get in shape, something like that, you can do that too. But uh, I can definitely say that uh, that, that was a, a big part of it, you know, was the, the finale. 
finale. So this year, it's moving over to Extreme Couture uh, here in Las Vegas, Randy Couture's place. So let's talk a little bit about that first, Jesse, uh, uh, moving over there and uh, some of the people that are going to be involved uh, this year. Yeah, so obviously, um, as the head coach for Whip to Warrior pretty much, in Las Vegas, it pretty much goes to wherever I am. So I left Syndicate and moved over to Extreme Couture and then approached them about running Season 3. Um, I've still got Corey Turner, who coached on the last one. He's coaching on this season at Extreme. And then we've got Michael Hobby, who was, I guess, the number one North American amateur when he was still fighting. And then Max Vroshkov, I don't know how to say his last name. Mm-hmm. Um, but he, he's a current pro fighter here. He's an all-state wrestling champion, like, legit coach, you know. We've also got Ty, assistant coaching, and then Chelsea's assistant coaching as well. Mm-hmm. Oh, Max, down over at... He, Max, yeah. Yeah, I know you're yeah, yeah. He's so just fun. He's a yes. dry deal guy. Yeah, yeah, he's a dry yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, so he's... He's phenomenal, man. He's good. Amazing. Mm-hmm. And, like, an even better coach than he is an athlete. Yeah, I actually yeah. take his Nogi classes. I'll jump in, and he teaches, and yeah. I watch. He went through a whole series on the Dars... The, a whole explanation on how to hold the hands I had never seen before. Uh, me and some other guys who were black belts were sitting there watching, like, wow, that's that's really a good way to put that yeah, on. Yeah, he explained so Show well. Show it to me, yeah. Mm. I watched him, even him teaching, like, obviously we've had black belts coaching on the season in the past, and even just watching him at tryouts teach people, brand new beginners, how to do a shrimp was just the most amazing explanation I've ever seen from anyone. Hmm. So yeah. that kind of kids too. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's why that's, he's really yeah, good at teaching why. this is because both him and Mike and myself all have coached children. And then that's like not saying these adults who do it are children, but they've got like, they've never done these movements. They've never experienced this before. So you kind of have to oh, treat them as exactly. if they're seeing everything for the f- very first time, you know? Yeah. And so Mike and Max are both amazing at that. They've, they've got really terrible dad jokes, you know, like yeah. Mike likes to bust out, in paragraph long analogies that don't make any sense but they mm. sound really good while he's saying it mm-hmm. like likes to hear himself talk <laughs> <laughs> pretty much but but they're cool like yeah. he'll, you know yeah. they're, they're, not a total they're, waste of time <laughs> no and they're, they're such a good balance of coaches because Max is like very rigid very now technical Max is a serious guy yeah, like almost militant in this style of coaching, which Corey is as well, because Corey's ex military, so he's very militant. And then Mike comes in and he's super empathetic and mm. like explains really well, but like understands how you're feeling and then understands that your knee is sore and like will do a lot to adapt to it. You know, he doesn't expect you to get everything 100% perfect every time. He, he wants to teach you how to make it work for you. Mm. So I'm super happy with our blend of coaches. Um, we're actually, can I, uh, we're actually, uh, so our last two finales were run inside the gym. This finale we're going to be holding in Henderson with Tough Enough. So we're going to actually have oh, a yeah. full event this time. We're trying, oh, to, okay. Very trying cool. to run it like a Tough Finale, yeah. how we have like one of our fights and then and then a local fight, and then one of our fights and a local fight and run it like that. So oh, okay. So breaking news, we just, we we just l- came from the deal meeting. We just oh, shook yeah. hands and okay. we have a handshake agreement yeah. with uh, Mr. Meyer, and uh, we're really excited to sort of be delivering on that ultimate promise of these people because it informs the training from lean on in there informs yeah. the training like from the beginning even when you do you want to switch lean this way that might pick them up like watch keep talking all right so see? oh look at this <laughs> frank doing a little <laughs> producing <laughs> project my theater right. voice yeah, yeah no, that's fun right. yeah, yeah. yeah 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 okay yeah you go ahead lean into that okay. one that's good this yeah that one sucks yeah there you are all right anyway all right so i think um from the business side of things, I'm always thinking about the value we're providing to our customers who are the people like you who went through this. And right, an in-gym fight is awesome and maybe that's really fun because your friends and family could be a part. But if we can actually help you make that walk <coughs> in an arena or an outdoor venue where there's like screens and it's all that much more yeah, real. Yeah, yeah, sure. And so when we start telling people, like Stephen Covey says, beginning with the end in mind, right? They, they know when they start training, this is gonna be the ultimate out. You are gonna make a walk for a real fight promotion. You're gonna be on BN Sports. People are gonna be able to watch this. You know, yeah. um, th- this, is, this is, the stakes are now higher. Oh, Wait, yeah. is this making you wanna do another round? Richard? Oh, I'm already in. Oh, I mean, yeah. did, 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 did somebody not tell you no. you were saddled with me again no, for another season? That. Are you, so awesome. Richie didn't tell you for this? Real? Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. So there dude. you go. Your debut. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. He announced this a while ago on our show. We talked about it. So yeah. Okay. He's in. Great. Yeah. At least know you know that the matchmaker back. doesn't oh, really? have any favoritism. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, well, there's probably. I promise I'll give you a better matchup. Your last fight didn't go anything like I thought it was going to go. Oh, really? You didn't I really think? thought okay. I really thought you were going to take him down. It was well, that was the plan. It I know. It turned out he was really oh, resistant to the idea. <laughs> well, move forward. Don't Nobody stay on told the him. <laughs> yeah. I'll probably let him yeah. with the matchmaking this time. All right. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Relax. All right. I got to admit it. When I saw who he was lined up with, I'm like, look at him all. Hey, so uh, 
Have you said anything to Jesse to piss her off? Yeah. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> like, no, I mean, like, do you think, I mean, did you guys, like, I mean, you guys get along on so many fucking levels. You're both real liberal. Like, <laughs> I'm like, what could you have said to upset her? Like, let's track this through the last couple times you <laughs> talked to her. Because obviously she's not happy with you. <laughs> I watched those two spar with each other for, like, ten weeks leading up to that. And I watched Richard just grapple the fuck out of him. And that yeah. was my intention the yeah. whole time. And then Scott suddenly, like decided he knew how to fight on the day. I'll, I'll a game tell on. you. All right, yeah, well, cause, cause like, he broke down what he did. I was like, wow, he stepped back with his lead foot, threw a hook off the backside and landed. And landing a hook on a moving object is not easy. A linear shot people run into, but for me to land a hook on your chin while you're coming at me, yeah. That's pretty high level. I mean, you're like you're you're you know what I mean. It's like go skeet shooting. That shit's not easy. You know what I mean? Like I don't think it was a calculated thing. <laughs> just for it the worked right out perfect. That's why I watched <laughs> it happen. I'm all wow. No, I really, uh, I really like had this vision of you take him down because yeah. he was so tall and terrible at grappling, and I'd watched you on top of him day after day after day, and him not know how to get back up. And I was like, fuck yeah, this fight's gonna be dope, you know? Well, that 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 was certainly my plan. Now I'll tell you though, here was the this was the big challenge for me, guys. Can we just get into this? Because we trust me, we have this is the first time you and I've really yeah. talked about it. We have broken this down over and over <laughs> again on this show. But but <coughs> what happened, guys, was so I I was comfortable with the grappling aspect but the striking i was brand new at and i mean to the point that and this just to give everybody a little reassurance if you're listening and you're thinking maybe i'll do this maybe i won't but you know i know there's going to be people that are thinking i know they say no experience but i really have no experience it's okay that is perfectly fine because yeah. when we this is where we started with striking like i'd never i'd never thrown a punch basically so i had to overcome like somebody I mean, I, I wanted to turn away. Like, I wanted to turn away. It was. It didn't make sense to me oh, to... Right. <laughs> yeah. He, show, he goes, Frank, I'm having a hard time with... Uh, I think it was your lead roundhouse, right? He's like, well, you know, or, or just a roundhouse in general. So he goes to throw a kick. I'm like, well, show me. We're here, right? Show me the kick. So he kicks, and I'm like looking at him. I'm like, man. I wish you would have at least played kickball back in the <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm like, normal people, when they pick their right leg up and move it out... It feels natural to counterbalance because that's how we walk to move your right hand backwards. You know what I mean? Like, and when he did it, like his hand and shoulder and foot all moved at the same time together in unison. Yeah. I'm like, I don't even know if I could do that if I tried for a few reps. Like, what? Like, I was like, wow. This I, <laughs> I was captain of the debate team in high school, guys. We didn't drill this stuff, but um, so so I had to come from that, right? So over the course of those months, I like got to me comfortable with it i mean you know no, you I, I, yeah, I, mean, I, was, I watched you smack people square in the face every sparring day well thank you yeah. i well, as i said you made a very good learning curve because talking to him the very first couple times then we even had a couple candid conversations like hey like i'm having an issue where yeah. it makes me nervous as someone punching you in the face i'm like well fuck, it makes me nervous too let me <laughs> explain to you what's going through my mind to help I'm like, look, anybody that tells you they're not afraid to get hit, they have a short career. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's, that's not a real good attribute to have in our sport. Yeah. And then going from that to where he finished off, I was impressed. Well, so here's what happened camp, come fight day. Because this, this was a very quick knockout. People don't know the story, but they probably do if they listen to this podcast. So my whole thing was that I had two things that I wanted to accomplish I from the striking sense. I, I, I was going to be comfortable if I got him to the ground. But my thought was with the striking, because fight starts on the feet, obviously, that I don't want to freeze like i want to be aggressive i want to be assertive and i did that probably to a fault <laughs> but but here's this was the other thing that i had in my head because one of the one of the fundamentals that i had sort of figured out while we were training or been taught was that as soon as i can touch you you can touch me so i'm going you know range range that's what my thought my thought was as soon as i can touch him now i'm going in well the, at six foot eight, the problem was yeah. I was in his range about ten inches before he was in mine. So all this is how it played out in my head because I never went out or anything like I wasn't knocked out, but it was like touch, I'm coming, I'm on the ground, and then there was this. I saw shoes, and I knew that was bad because I was thinking <laughs> I got to get up quick because he's coming, and I saw the shoes, and I was like, man, he came in this thing barefoot. That's the referee. Uh, this is not oh, good. Yeah, I'm seeing yeah. a pair of shoes right there in front of me. Can I say that, that was, was the only time in not only the 22 weeks that we did Wimp to Warrior, but he also was doing a little bit of Muay Thai before we started uh -huh. the program. That was the first time I ever saw him use his length 
in his striking. Yeah, he picked which a good was, time. Which, yeah, but that was one of day. the reasons yeah. why I put you with him because yeah. he was so long and he was always punching like this. And I feel like every sparring session I was yelling at him, go, fuck, Scott, like, use your rage, he use finally your rage. Heard you. <laughs> that yeah, was yeah, the yeah. one day he yeah. did. Yeah. Well, here's here's the next <laughs> Lucky thing. You, huh, yeah, here's the next thing. Now, this is the thing you and I have to say because we have not talked about this. We so, have not talked okay. about anything. So, so here's what happened. So I'm over there. <laughs> And, uh, you know, Frank's given me the, do I know what day it is and all that. And I answered all the questions right. So we're good there. I was looking there. forward to that, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> not, not you being knocked out, but yeah. I've always wanted to be on the other side of those uh, questions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're. <laughs> A little bucket list. So we're, yeah, so, sure. we're, so we're pulling the, he's pulling the gloves off and everything. And Frank says to me, wow, that's a, that was the first time in two seasons that they've had a knockout. <laughs> and I said, I looked at him and I said, <coughs> How do you know that? And he said, well, Jesse told me. And I said, just now? And he said, yeah. And I said, so she thought that on our way back from the cage, yeah. this would be pertinent information for us to be I didn't tell you. I told with. Yeah, and my dumbass was still in fight mode. Because he was talking to me, and I was like, that's the first time that's ever happened. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah. and also too, like in the gym, my etiquette of mindset's a little bit different, you know. So yeah, we're afterwards at the bar. Yeah. We've been a lot more, you know. Oh, let me worry about your feelings. But in the gym, there's no feelings. It was you know, just yeah. like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think know? I was more in shock too that yeah. like you got caught that quick. Because mm -hmm. like, so was I. Because I was like, last season we didn't have like any finishes. We had no yeah. submissions, no knockouts. And yeah. then this season we were getting submissions. We got TKOs, all that. And I think seeing that was exactly that. I was like, yeah. what the fuck? Because yeah. I did not see that. Yeah, going like and Scott's great that that's the one day he decided yeah. to actually do the fucking twenty two weeks of stuff I've been <laughs> trying to teach him. Well, I, don't, I yeah, I don't know. Plus, Jesse is uh, negotiating with Stefan Struve to come in to fight me for this season. <laughs> so, uh, that'll be exciting. Basically I think this is a shorter guy. Yeah. UFC, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, it, it no, it was it was more, yeah, it was just a matter of like those fundamentals because I actually felt pretty. Coming out of it, and again, this is for anybody who's thinking about doing this that's like, you know, I don't know, I've got all these. You can come up with a million reasons not to. But I'll tell you this. As quick as the fight went and it didn't go my way and everything, I felt like I totally accomplished something. Yeah. And I felt like I totally achieved something because I went in there and I knew what my real battle was, other than obviously the guy that was going to knock me out, <laughs> was against myself because I wanted to do better than I did on those gym days, like yeah. as I was coming, and I did, you know what I'm saying? So Dude, you came out fiery. I remember what, like I remember standing at the entrance to the cage and watching you guys walk up to the cage, and I was like, fuck yeah, Richard's here. Oh, well, thank you. Well, I, I, <laughs> you know, my, hey, I'm impressed with anybody that actually shows up, because I know how many, I've been around a lot of fighters yeah. at top levels that, you know, right, out on the day of the fight. Yeah, on my back, <laughs> it's like, eh. going in front of a crowd of people changes everything. Yeah, Frank was watching me hobble around because there's the thing in this se I'm going to turn 49 during this season so midlife crisis it's cheaper than driving a sports car but it's it's a little more painful sometimes <laughs> but uh but I, I mean I was like a couple of days before the fight I remember I was dropping you off at your house and uh Frank got out of the car and he's all like you know getting out real slow and getting his body going to go up to the house and he just turns around and looks at me and he goes eh, look at this want to be like this <laughs> I'll let the career go too long yeah but I tell you, here's my idea for for you, Jesse. Because no, um, actually, you're being even more humble. Mm. I had a conversation with you. I told him because he actually had a decently serious knee injury. Yeah. Right. So I, I looked at him. I was like, Hey, you know, do we really have to do this? You know, as your friend, like you've got the training, you got the experience. Now we have a legitimate injury that if you were getting paid for this fight and I was your manager, I would try to postpone the fight, move it around. Like, hey, can we talk to the guy? I'd maybe go on a card just two weeks later. Like. We actually had a legitimate, you know, uh, reasoning for why our performance is not going to be what it should be. I'm like, bro, you're a, a comedian, a DJ, a mar manager. Like, we're not a professional fighter. You don't have to show up. You know what I mean? Like, not mean like you don't. We, you know, we're not going to just go, but we can make the phone call yeah. right now and go. Hey, I got a mm. fucked up knee. I'm 48 years old. You know, I, I don't want this to be my first and only performance. I go in there with an injury. So he's like, no, no, I'm going to do it. I'm like, oh, man, I'm like fucking giving you intellectual is easy. Though. Here's the cushion, man. Just fall into it, man. I, yeah. got, I got the narrative right here. Yeah. I'll fucking... even call it myself. <laughs> yeah. Just lay down, man. Just lay down. <laughs> I'm like the doctor telling the kid here, here's the, here's the get out of school excuse right here. He's all, no, I'm, I'm okay. I'm like, really? All right. 
No, I definitely wanted to, to see it through, had the experience, and it's an awesome experience for anybody that wants to do this. Anybody wants to message me, like if you're thinking about this, but maybe you have some questions and stuff like that, um, you can definitely message me online and, and I'll talk to you about it. Like our friend uh, Sam Hyde up in Portland, he's about to have his finale on May the 11th. This guy uh, signed up for Wimp to Warrior uh, this season because he listened to our podcast, one of our listeners up in Portland, and he's having his uh, finale on May the 11th. So we're team Sam Hyde yeah, all the way here on Booth fighting, go. right? Yeah. Uh, so here's my idea, Jess. This is what I wanted to, to tell you because uh, after I, I found out your incredibly poor timing <laughs> of sharing this note uh, about the uh, only knockout, fortunately, I think later on there was a knockout, yes. so the record didn't stand very yeah, long. Correct. but when Frank told me this, so I thought to myself, you know what? <clears throat> Here's the idea I'm going to pitch. So, you know, now that the UFC's on the ESPN Plus app, they're looking for all this new original content and stuff. And I don't know if you've noticed on ESPN now how, like, sometimes they have uh, Megan Olevy standing right outside the entrance yeah. way, like when the fighters come out. So here's what we do with you. This is original uh, content for ESPN+. Plus. We get you your own show on the app, but the hook is that you're standing outside the cage and you break bad news to <laughs> fighters that are on their way out. So some guy just gets his ass kicked and you come up with a microphone and go, do you realize that's the first time in UFC history that a fighter had three straight 10-8 rounds scored against them? <laughs> like, you deliver some horrible news cut to jesse with more bad yeah, news. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they see you coming and they're like oh no this is not going to be hey i'm yeah, into it okay. i'm looking for some new revenue streams yeah that could be it all right we'll see if it gets you signed up for that <laughs> so that is um went to warrior.com is the website like i said if you're here in vegas uh you can do the program with us start next week and then but but just these programs run all around the world, all different countries, different times of the year. So just look at the website and see when the one closest to you is uh, going to happen. And uh, uh, Richie Cranny, uh, who is the the founder of uh, Went to War, is an awesome guy, and he he's on a lot. Like he'll talk to you too. That's the other yeah. thing too. He gets in touch with people. You message him on Facebook, and he gets right back to you throughout your uh, your process and everything. So uh, anyway, check uh, check out the program. So how how are we looking this this season? What do we? How, I mean, do you know? How many people yet? I still or? have one more tryout yeah, on Saturday, okay. Okay. Uh, which I have a, a pretty large number booked in for. Good. So All right. that, and then I've opened it up. So we start next Monday on April 29th, but then I've opened up the first four weeks to, if anyone wants to come and do it, then mm -hmm. they can come to any any of those morning sessions and okay. sign up for the program. So you've okay. got four weeks to do that. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah. Okay, good, good. And then, uh, so let's see. So you said, uh, Cor oh, so you said Corey's coming back. Corey's to coming back. Yeah. Which is nice, Frank, because between Jesse and Corey, it reminds me of uh, growing up, a lot of random yelling in my house. <laughs> and you definitely get that uh, with the program. Now, we're adding Ty. Now, Ty, here's the, okay, so now I have an important question for you. I need to know what's on your iPod playlist. What's on my iPod? Lean into that microphone. Yeah. Uh, Give me an idea of what you're listening to. I mean, being an island boy, I basically listen to just pretty much reggae music. Uh, okay. And then, well, prior to training, occasionally wait, rap. What's, wait, what's your UFC debut walkout song? Tell him what that is. Rock steady. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. You know that. He appreciates. You know, he thinking, appreciates music. Yeah. Yeah. I'm actually thinking I'm gonna learn the song. I'm learn the whole dance for the song. And oh. Maybe do it for the whole walkout. Okay. We'll we'll All see. right. We'll see how good it looks. Well, so far, so good, because, I, you know, Frank, uh, I'm on record as saying that, that MMA gyms are where I go a lot of times to hear the world's worst music. <laughs> yes. That's where I've been educated. What was this morning? We had two thousand year 2000 yeah, we had party hits. Oh, 2000 summer hits, summer hits. Oh yeah. God. Well, to Jesse's credit, she's an anomaly to that. So, I mean, I think it was the first or second day we were uh, listening to Jerry Reed uh, yeah. at Wimp to Warriors. You were more so impressed I'm, with that, though, I think, some of the techniques, because I was trying to ask you, like, so how was class? Like, yeah, music. I'm like, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Music so, down. so uh, she was good. Corey, we're going to have to work on a little bit. Corey I'll was, give Corey a Whip to Aria playlist. Corey, okay. That, that would be handy. No, Corey Tunnel. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 He, what I will forever remember about uh, last season with him was that there was some song that you could always count on coming up with him. That this is what the song. I don't know who does it. I, I don't know anything <laughs> about it, but it was this. It was a guy going. Your price is way too high. You have to cut it. <laughs> and the guy would just say that over and over and over again. 
<laughs> what do they call that kind of music now? I forgot. Literally teases about it. Do you know what that is? I, you ever know, I, I didn't cut it. I don't know what it. I don't know what it is. Do you know what's funny though? Because my kids, I'll hear those songs yep. being played. I got to Google shit. Like, I'm I, sure. I, you know, I got the one song. It was a guy was singing a song about. It. He had two phones. One for the load, one for the plug. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm actually Googling, what the fuck's a load? What the fuck's a plug? You know what, I mean? like, what are my kids listening to? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Well, okay, so Max is a country boy, so okay. he listens to a lot of country. Okay. Um, actually, I think Mike listens to a lot of country as well. Yeah. All right. So you'll get a lot of country out of those two. Yeah. Not a whole lot of Eminem. We're, we're a super anti Eminem for this season. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, maybe. Um, uh, just out of curiosity, why? Because both of those boys said that anytime someone at the gym requests music, it's always Eminem. So they're like, we're not playing Eminem. Oh. Yeah. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> All right. Maybe, you know, after season three, as Richie continues to expand this program, maybe at some point after I retire, I come on as a musical consultant. I'm maybe down I'll for do that. that. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. I'm planning, what I'm thinking here, guys, is um, that it's going to sound, I was describing this to somebody the other day. I said, I think it'll sound cooler when I tell my tall tales if I talk about my fights and I'll <laughs> emphasize the S yeah. you know what I mean I'm really just kind of looking to have like a CM Punk like career I was thinking the first one got finished early but the second one win or lose it yeah. went the distance you know it was yeah. it was a little more competitive so I've kind of set the bar if I can exceed that bar I'll be even happier so I just run it off but when you said CM Punk it made me think pro wrestling and I thought Austin you went and saw Austin stand up how was it I missed it because oh, you said I, you were there. Well, I was there, but I didn't know he was on the bill, and I showed up late. Oh shit! So I still haven't seen it. Austin Aries. We have a friend that's a pro wrestler oh, here nice. in Vegas, and uh, yeah, so I still have to get out to uh, see his stand up. All right, <laughs> okay. Well, so that's the deal. So I'm, I'm super in. happy that you're doing it again, Richard. All right, I'm excited too. This is yeah. more breaking news. A, yeah, it was a really nice surprise for today. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I'm glad. Richard, I could just for the record, Richard was one of I think three people that would stay and train with me extra after every single session that I taught. Well, I, yeah, and that's yeah. Jesse, so that Jesse, was a big thing. Well, and Jesse, you know, made that available, I and mean, that's again a, a something I can really say it's uh, awesome about the program. I wish you'd take advantage of coming to Drysdale's at night. Uh, <laughs> well, I will be now. Yeah. Trust me. Uh, you know, and that's another thing too. I'll tell you this: that even though I, I you know, I, I showed up, took it seriously, whatever. I don't think there's any substitute for having gone through it once and realizing I think a second time through there will be more nuances where I'll be like yeah, yeah I can I can focus even harder on this than I realized I could have the yeah. first time around because nothing's an unknown. I was know. surprised at how many people um, come back. Yeah. Uh, come back series to series like they <coughs> will roll right well, back into it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to ask cuz I personally was more scared my second fight than I was my very first fight. Mm. I think your very first fight, yeah. there's so many, right? Okay, so I'm yeah. not the only one that thinks yeah. this shit. Yeah. The very first fight, there's like so much going on, you're almost overwhelmed. Yeah. So you're fucking scared. I'm not saying you're not. I was terrified. But like, there's other stuff that's happening and it's new. So it's kind of like you're like exploring. But then all of a Everything's sudden. Everything's exciting as well the yeah. first time. Yeah. The second fight, all the newness of, I've done this before. And all of a sudden, it's like just the pure dread of, holy fuck, tomorrow night I'm being locked in this. Did I do enough? Did I train enough? Do I know enough? Is the other guy, you know what I mean? Then it's like, you're almost more relaxed so you can actually question the craziness yeah. of what you're about to do. And so just forewarning, yeah. and I, the other professional fighters at the table seem to agree. Our second one was worse. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I think, I honestly think like, you know now what my intentions for you were first season. I'm going to say they're probably going to be the same through your second season, right? So... Like, you know what we're going to focus See, on, Richard? I, you, I, I hear you, but you have that smile you always do when you're... You, she does always seem a little mischievous. When yeah. Speaking, right? It's just because I'm barn, all right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like this. It's like I'm what I'm living here, what I'm telling you. Yeah, there's too much direct eye contact. You know, yeah. Like a sociopath over here. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I really love my job. Yeah. <laughs> I do it to him all the time at home. All right, so a couple of quick thoughts on uh, you guys uh, hang around here. We're going to do a few more minutes. Let's uh, talk a qu couple of quick fight uh, thoughts on fights this weekend, Frank. Uh, your uh, pro home, uh, Bellator, has Bellator 220 coming up this weekend. Roy McDonald taking on John Fitch for the uh, Bellator uh, welterweight title. It's part of the 170-pound tournament over there. Uh, John Fitch, 41 years old. 
these days, taking on uh, Rory McDonald. Uh, Fitch is on a five-fight winning streak, though. He's gone 7-2 and two since he left the UFC. What do you think in terms of uh, uh, a guy that's remembered as a very proficient wrestler taking on uh, you know, Rory McDonald is probably going to have a striking advantage there? Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, that's where I think Rory has the biggest advantage. I think, though, that Roy is still younger, uh, is still pretty much in the prime of his, his athletic years, and he has a very similar grappling game that Fitch has, very much more upper body orientated. You know, I mean, Corey does have a decent double he'll drop down on, but he's very good at pushing you against a cage, locking hands, and, and, and pulling guys down, and that's what Fitch is really a master. Fitch doesn't really blast you a double from halfway across the cage. He, he works in behind striking, connects his hands around your waist against the cage, and then just drags people down, and they can never get him off of him. You know, he has such a good control game. Uh, I, I think Corey just has more ways to finish, is more dangerous in that aspect. So, you know, like, Fitch, even though like he's technically a very good striker, I feel. But it's one of those things where like it doesn't matter how well you know how to dunk a basketball if you don't have the leg power to yeah. dunk a basketball. It don't fucking matter. <clears throat> That's kind of how Fitch is with his stand up. I'm sure he'd make it. He, he could explain it as well as any other high level striker how to throw a, a straight right hand. He just doesn't have the horsepower physically to be menacing with it. He has okay power. So I think that's what holds him back where, where you know, Rory is more explosive of an athlete. So when he throws his strikes, even though he might not know any more, not be technically better, he just the end result is better because you have a better athlete throwing the shot. I yeah. like that. That's a good explanation. <laughs> Yeah. Um, uh, Alima Lay McFarlane will be defending her uh, flyweight title in the uh, co-main event. Like I said, I talked to her this morning, so uh, we'll be playing that here at the end of the show, my visit uh, with her. And uh, then the UFC is going head-to-head over on ESPN Plus uh, with Bellator. They're going to be uh, putting on a card in Fort Lauderdale on Saturday. Jacare Sousa taking on Jack Hermanson, who is a late replacement for the injured Yoel Romero. But uh, Hermanson has been coming on with a three-fight win streak. All finishes. Jacare, for his part, is coming off of a fight-of-the-night win over Chris Weidman. Frank, what are you facing when you face Jacare Sousa? Well, I mean, he has the background. I mean, he's a world champion in jiu-jitsu with a gi on. And when people talk about being good at jiu-jitsu, uh, when you can go and win worlds with a gi on as a black belt, that's like the the that's the, the very pinnacle of, of accomplishment in that sport. But then some guys can't transfer it over. Um, you know, Roger Gracie is the pinnacle of a gi, no, no gi, also guy, jiu-jitsu guy. But he wasn't able to transfer that over to cage fighting uh, in MMA. Just he wasn't the threat, you know. Uh, I remember watching a fight when uh, you know he he took uh, uh, Kennedy's back. Had that been a, a grappling match, the fight would have been over, and you can start your clocks thirty seconds later. This he's going to get choked the fuck out. And it wasn't the case where Jacare, because of his athleticism and his mindset, one I think it was actually he didn't kind of go in there going, "Well, I'm going to pull guard or get everybody to the ground and just use my jujitsu." He really wanted to learn how to do stand-up, and, and sometimes that cost him in his fights earlier in his career where it's like, well, you know, you're playing a game that other guys have been playing a lot longer. You know, why don't you get him to your strengths? But I think now that he's, you know, he's, uh, you know, taken his lumps and, and, and combined a style that's very well-rounded, and he's so explosive. He, kind of going back to my analogy before, he might not be the most technical guy at throwing a certain maneuver, but because he's such a good athlete, it doesn't require the same amount of precision. He can make up for a lack of technique in a certain area because just pure ability of just power. I mean, right now, the guy has a 30-inch vertical. You have a 30-inch vertical, give me a month, and I can teach you to knock someone out. You know mm-hmm. I mean? You might not be the greatest at it as far as, but the one or two shots you know, people, even high-level guys, are going to now be threatened by you because if it lands, it's going to hurt. Mm-hmm. I have a question about yeah. that fight real quick. So I read that if Jacare wins, he's next in line to fight for the title. If Hermanson wins, is he going to be next in line to fight for the title? Because uh, I know he hasn't been in talks at all. Yeah. I didn't and, know who he was until well, we talked about it. I think that's, pr- right? I mean, come on. I mean, in the UFC especially. Yoel could still go fight for the title. Yeah, yeah. it's all name recognition. I mean, how else can a guy come out of retirement, fight in a different weight class, and fight for a title? If, if you know, if, if your name hits, you know, trending. Yeah. You're getting a title shot. You know what I mean? That's all it requires. If you're a trend, you know, if any of the girls right now in pro wrestling decided to come over here, that you know, name like the Bella Twins, right? They wanted to fight. Yeah. Guess what? They're above you on a title shot. This yeah. is just the way it is. Even yeah. though the girl can't fight for shit, or you know what I mean, might not even be able to make it out of the locker room. I, I said that before with CM Punk. Look, I mean, the guy, what he got paid. He's gotten paid more than almost any fight I've ever met 
five years into their career yeah. has made yeah. combined. <laughs> Yeah. First five years, almost any guy in that card, if you say, how much are you making? And if we add it all together, I guarantee the one debut of CM Punk beat them. And that's it, it's just the nature of our sport on that level because UFC has to get buys. They're too big of a machine to really have cards where you could sacrifice viewership because you're trying to build guys up. Right off the bat right now, they're just worried about viewership. I mean, how else do you got a guy like Greg Hardy who's on a co-main event? The guy's Glad a you garbage brought, fighter. Right. You know what I mean? Like, he's a horrible fighter. I was there live in New York watching him, and I was like, Jesus, this guy is like, I, I thought he would be better because of his athletic background. Yeah. You know what I mean? For what you think of him outside the cage, I was like, oh, inside the cage, that high level of a football player, he has to be disciplined, right? He's going to be focused on training and getting there. And I, I'm watching, and the guy he's fighting, I'm like, oh, my God. Like, by my very first fight, that fight wouldn't have lasted 30 seconds. The version of me 20 years ago, the, you know, I didn't even know half of what I know now. So, I mean, I was very unimpressed, but I mean, his name recognition and the fact that I think more people probably want to watch him get his ass kicked really is he gets most viewership. Yeah. It's interesting you brought that up because Greg <coughs> Hardy is in this co main event on Saturday, uh, taking on Dmitry Smolikov. <sighs> Greg Hardy has a disqualification loss in his pro debut, and Smolikov has gone 0 and 2 in the UFC, and that is the co main event. <laughs> Above, I'm going to name you a whole list of recognizable names that are fighting underneath that. But I am convinced this is just because nobody gives a fuck. Yeah. This is as sad as I, I mean, Jesse and I talked at the length about this one time when you were on the show. But it's like as as infuriating as this makes me, it's like, you know, if you can, you can beat up women and torture dogs and shoot each other, whatever. As long as you don't sit down for the national anthem because we can't, that will cross a line of poor taste. We can't be having that. But any of the rest of it, it's just like people. I mean, I guess no, but I guess enough people don't care. It I just don't think it's bugs that. The crap I, actually, out of me. I actually think it's exactly what Frank said: is that no. it's who's trending, right? So the more people that are spewing hate about Greg Hardy, mm. the more his name is in the media, yeah. and that's what it is. The more people are going to watch him either lose, or they're going to be his supporters and watch him well, uh, want to watch him win. And I think what they're going to try to do is people going to want to watch him get his ass kicked. I think you'd only have a one fight payoff. If you bumped Orlowski up to him right now and watch Orlowski just dismantle mm -hmm. him, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, you get your one fight satisfaction to watch this guy get his ass kicked, but eh. Whereas if you go ahead and throw him, like, you know, uh, not to insult anybody, but the last guy, he knows he was lined up yeah. to lose the fight. Mm -hmm. The guy right now who's 0 2 in the UFC and he's facing him, it's like, hmm, you're in a co main event and you're 0 2. You're the fall guy. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, you're supposed to lose. They're hoping in every way except for where it'd be illegal for them to tell you to take a dive. <laughs> they want you to lose. You know what I mean? Like, don't be surprised if the bus is late picking you up so you get to the locker room at the last <laughs> second. You know what I mean? Like, they're, they're, they're going to do everything they can to make sure that Hardy wins his fight. So maybe build him up a couple fights. But, you know. Let people hate him even more. Let him hate him yeah. every more. And then finally, somebody who is also a, more of a commodity that you can – stand having you know wear your belt i mean be a good fight for like a miochik type you know what i mean like somebody who like is an outstanding human being that everybody pretty much likes yeah. but doesn't necessarily push the needle on trending because mm -hmm. he's your neighbor well that's yeah. your now you've got your classic good versus bad yeah storyline so well, now people yeah. are going to watch not because of miochik being a great guy but because now we can see that the the guy that you would want to come home and ask your daughter's hand in marriage like that type of guy is going to beat the shit out of the guy that you just fucking despise yeah yeah the thing that bothers me about that and i just wish consumers would understand is if much more gratifying than watching a horrible person get their ass kicked is watching them not get paid yeah watching that's them not satisfying. make more money than yes. i'm making right now for the same that's, job yeah that's that never what's happened. that's the reason why our, our, we're set up this way is look the most important voting power we have is our ability to purchase things yeah. purchasing power yeah that's the if anybody yanks somebody off of a fucking uh, an ad or they they, they they take off their sponsorship it's because you're hurting their money yeah uh, that's it yeah. doesn't they don't really give a fuck what your views are uh, none of that as long as it boils down to like are people going to stop giving us money for our product because mm -hmm. of said human being you know what i mean so but at the same time it seems like the train wrecks like i mean like think about it the kardashians are not I, you'd be hard pressed right now to go around the supermarket right now and go hey are you a fan would you want your daughter to grow up to be like one of the kardashians you know one of them's a billionaire right like 
pretty sure that most people be like, fuck no. Yeah. My, my daughter makes a porno with a guy? Hell no, I don't want any of that around my child, regardless of the, the, the financial success it comes with. But because they're train wrecks, people still, I mean, there's the only reason why they make the money they make is somebody's watching. And that's what we do. That we, we buy their magazines, we purchase it. Very few people such as yourself can be disciplined to go, hey, you know what? That's the, 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 the troubled child in the back. If I pay attention, I'm only giving in to their, their tirades. What does the rest of the classroom do? Everybody pays attention to the asshole. You know what I mean? And that's what equals the money yeah. nowadays. Yeah. Well, listen to the, the fighters that are fighting underneath that co-main event. First of all, the feature fight is Alex Cowboy Oliveira and Mike Perry. I mean, that's, that's a fight of the night candidate right there. I mean, that's what I'd have as a co-main event. Uh, Perry needs to get back on the winning streak, one and three in his uh, past four fights, but always puts on uh, an exciting fight. And Oliveira is uh, coming off a loss to Gunnar Nelson, but he has earned bonuses in three of his past five fights. Glover Teixeira is on the undercard. John Lineker, both of those guys are on win streaks. And then the, you mentioned Andre Arlovsky earlier. The prelims have uh, Arlovsky, Carla Esparza, Ben Saunders, Jim Miller, Angela Hill, Court McGee. A lot of That's recognizable crazy. names. That's crazy. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I know. It's like you, you got all that. All the way up to the co-main. Yeah. The yeah, you got off. all that name value. I know. Crazy stuff. One more question for you, Frank. Um, uh, Alexi Olenek uh, got stopped late in the first round this past weekend against uh, Alistair Overeem over in Russia. He took that fight on short notice, and uh, Overeem uh, uh, landed some of those signature knees of his. But um, it was interesting with Olenek because prior to that, he's pulling guard. He's trying to set up that Ezekiel choke. And I am fascinated. I'm fascinated with fighters who have these niche Fin, uh, like maneuvers yeah. like Ovent St. Prue and the Von Flu choke. Yeah. Like for whatever reason, there's just this one thing that really get it. Alexi Olenek and that Ezekiel choke, which is super rare without a gi. I I've mean, I've never I, seen anybody do it in even no gi competition. Yeah, no, I mean, I learned it in a, a see, you know, in a, like a gi class, but I'd never even seen anybody even think about doing it in no gi. Not only has Olenek won two fights in the UFC with a no gi Ezekiel, one where he, he was mounted. Yes. Like, that, I still, like, yeah. my brain, when we went back to the gym the next day, I've rattled Drysdale's brain, you know, who's pretty much is, to me, is the de facto expert on jujitsu. Anything with joint manipulation mm. or choking someone unconscious, if Drysdale doesn't know about it, it's not worth knowing. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, so talking to him about it, we can't, no one can figure it out. Yeah. Like, he was, he's just, we're assuming his hands have to be just the tendon connections, his bone structure. He's just, you know what I mean? Like, it's a technique that just he was born to do. It must be, because not only has he finished two UFC fights, if you go back and look through his pro career, 11 wins in MMA with that Ezekiel choke. What? 11. <laughs> 11. 11. That's insane. Isn't that crazy? And it's so interesting to me to watch him, because even though it, it didn't work out against uh, Overeem, it's interesting when somebody is so known for something like that, and they're just going to do it. You know what's going to happen. Yeah. It's just a question of can you stop it, and you saw him like trying to set it up, even at the you point know, that I he's pulling really him out. In other aspects, when you have a guy, like say you're fighting a guy like, oh, man, this guy's a phenomenal double. Even if you can't find someone else in the gym that has the double leg takedown that maybe your opponent has, mm -hmm. Your partners can simulate a double. You know what I mean? There's not. A, I mean, if I'm fighting a guy, it's like, hey, you know, I'm being told, hey, my opponent throws a lot of head kicks. Well, I don't, but I can spar you and throw mm -hmm. them. It's just mm -hmm. not my forte. But I, I'm capable of doing any maneuver. Whereas in this situation, with him having the movie has. I don't know who you get to fucking practice on you because it's like, well, who do we get? I'm like, fuck, there's only one guy in the world that knows how to do this yeah. to his level. I mean, I can show you how to get out of the gi version of it, you know, but mm -hmm. I don't know the no gi version, if it, what he's doing that makes it such high level uh, success. Yeah, that's yeah, pretty incredible yeah, stuff. How do you practice it? You know what I mean? Like, how do you train for I it? I feel like, does he grab his gloves? Because you know how you grab the you grab. The I've key. tried to look. Mm -hmm. I can never see a close-up mm -hmm. yeah. enough shot. If we ever, if you anybody can give yeah. me a close. Yeah, because you could legal. Can you legally you grab, grab your, your own gloves? gloves? Yeah. Your yeah. own, you right? Your like your yeah. shorts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, maybe so. I don't know. Most people, though, in fact, that'd be interesting. I bet you that's why. If he tapes it or not, because I know most guys like myself. I tape my. You know when they put the red or blue tape mm -hmm. on you, I make sure that half. You know, at least a quarter of it touches my skin. Hmm. So that way, when I'm pulling my arm out, if someone wants to stall me and hold my arms with overhooks, oh. I don't want that lip of the glove yeah, catching yeah. on anything. Oh, oh yeah. I want to be able to pull Frank. my arm. Yeah. You know, like, so now it's a wedge. You know what I mean? Like, I want my arm to be as slick as possible yeah. and pull out, you know? Or if I'm going for a choke and you're trying to grab my wrist, I don't yeah. want to give you a nice 
shelf to base off your grip, you know? Yeah. So I'm sure that's easier to pull your arm out, you know? Yeah. You learn these little weird tips yeah. with him like that. Sometimes they I involve... I miss trading with Frank. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? I'll go down to uh, Couture's because right now I'm only doing ground. I haven't really done yeah. any stand... Well, Princey's back in town and he was even asking me, like, what are we going to do stand-up at? I'm all... Fuck, I don't know, man. Syndicate's such a far drive. <laughs> like, there we go. People ask me, like, why'd you stop doing that? I'm like, dude, just 35, so 40 minutes, one direction for me. I'm like, oh, I'm trying to find some gym in the north or yeah. you know, somewhere. Yes, right. right now. We'll jump yeah, in and, with and it. My fucking car sucks again. Yeah. Now, uh, Jesse, so you, you got the uh, crutches in the background there. Uh, if anybody follows you on social media, they know you're in a little bit of a rehabilitative like a stage yeah. right now. Uh, so what's uh, do we have your next fight booked yet? No, I was supposed to be fighting on 237 in Rio on May 11th. That's, okay, that's right, because I knew I had something committed. That was going to be the Bantamweight, yeah. and then, but then that had to come off because of yeah. what's going on here. Ligaments? What are we doing? Yeah, three yeah. ligaments. I still got uh, six weeks, no weight on the crutches. Not having to have surgery, though? No. Okay, They good. decided against surgery, which right. was good. So six weeks before we can talk about what would yeah. be next. Yeah. All right. Yeah. No. But I have like I have this sick little peg leg crutch mm -hmm. turning up tomorrow, which I'm super excited about because oh. it means I can start training again. Oh. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Mikey. Yeah, it's I'm gonna be like a pirate. It sits in your knee, and it's like a really short crutch, and then oh, it has like a platform at the back for your leg to sit on. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's Bella was using the scooter for a little while. Yeah. Well, it same. looks the yeah. same. It's just a it, Yeah, that's what I can yeah. imagine where you pump at a crutch. Oh, yeah. okay. You could ask her what's the main reason why she's getting it, though. What? So she can vacuum the house. <laughs> that is what it's for. Oh. <laughs> What, what was happening? Well, I'm not supposed to walk on it, right? Yeah. And it's really hard to vacuum with crutches on. So I keep getting in trouble for, <laughs> for vacuuming without my crutches. So. I'm just glad you're that committed to a clean house. Oh, no, I I clean my floors a lot. All right. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> That'd be the same way. You got to get the one thing I just bought, Jen, but uh, handheld. Have you seen those new motors? Next time it's your house. I, I don't even know what the fuck it's called. I want to get a Roomba. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, 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 our Airbnb, house has too many of these yeah. ledges and shit. Like, it would work one room. We'd have to pick it up and put it in the next. <laughs> Fucking mm. sunken living rooms and all this bullshit. I stayed at an Airbnb in Cali when I was up at CSA, and she had a room that would start at 9 a.m. and go till 9.45 every day, and the house was always spotless. So she had two dogs. So it was like cleaning up all the dog hair they and do everything. They a good job. Oh, um, yeah. I want one. Well, that's cool. Yeah. I feel like my dogs would try to eat it, though, for yeah. sure. Yeah. 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 Nice. Yeah. All right. So uh, so uh, you'd be on the shelf for a little bit with, uh, with that, but... But uh, Means hopefully, I can coach yeah, that's time. right. You can yeah. be uh, devoted to being a full-time uh, wimp to warrior coach. Um, Scott, anything that we did not cover that we should mention, and it's maybe outside of the Vegas program. Anything you want to let people know? Different markets that are maybe about to pop up or start up, or uh, sure. Um, look, we are uh, expanding in North America rapidly. Yeah. Um, the implementation of this program is being looked at like a strategic partnership with these gyms mm -hmm. because there's a lot to getting it, um, getting it going. Mm -hmm. So I'm being very selective about who we're opening up with, right? Mm -hmm. This is not like just selling something that's easy because there's a lot to do. A lot of care and concern has to go in from the coaching perspective, as you as you well know, right? Yeah, and sure. so um, we're very excited to um, announce that uh, Duke Rufus has signed on and he'll be um, launching the program at his academy mm. in uh, Milwaukee. Awesome. And, and I think Duke is, um, his enthusiasm for what we're doing for the sector, the actual sector of the mixed martial arts world, we're putting a lot of value and care back into the places that matter most with this program because we're it's an economic engine for the gyms. Yes. And, you know, we're getting people into the sport that are non-traditional entrants to the sport from mm -hmm. a participation perspective, right? We're pulling in those people that are, you know, the average 35-year-old executive guy that, you know, or in his 40s that doesn't currently recognize the version of himself that's looking back at him in the mirror and you know women that sort of want to reset and do something from an empowerment perspective mm -hmm. so it's kind of exciting for coaches who have been and seen it and done it all they're seeing these new type of people in their gyms and it, it just is, it's a feel-good thing yeah it definitely is and and you you brought up something that i always like to point out when i talk about women to worry which is that when when you look at the website all the gyms that you're going to see affiliated are world-renowned gyms. They're places where pro fighters uh, train. Yeah. There's, you're really not going to see one that's kind of a mystery guest on there. It's going to be, you know, a who's who. It's, it's all, all the same gyms that you hear talked about whenever you're watching UFC or Bellator or anything like that. This fighter trains out of this gym or that gym. And that's so important because, as I've told Richie many a time, it's the kind I told Richie before I had met him, I said, uh, you know, I gotta tell you, this is the kind of thing that on paper, if the right people weren't running it, 
Sounds like it could be a horrible idea. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, we're just going to get a bunch of people who don't know how to fight together. But it's the opposite of that because, like you said, so much care is given to what programs, uh, what yeah. gyms are affiliated with it. Yeah, this is no um, Australian ATM machine that backs up to an MMA gym three times a year. Right, right, right. yeah, this yeah. This is, right. uh, it's, qu it's quite a complicated thing to get going. You have to have a gym that has a very good grip on their finances and their business and who's coming in and out of the gym. And we work very closely with them with best business practices. We have an entire back office staff that's, we see how the model works is essentially we, we help deliver the pool of um, participants, right? And then, the coaches may help us welcome them. Jesse excels at that, you know, make sure there's a friendly voice on the phone for the first time they come into the mats and someone they may it's recognize. Not my voice. <laughs> yeah. But uh, and then we follow up with them, we set up payment plans and then we remit funds to the gym. You know, mm -hmm. so we are we become truly strategic partners with the gym. Mm -hmm. So um, if every if we lean into the process and we get the we teach the gym to lean into the process, something interesting happens from an experiential standpoint and an economic standpoint. So it's really neat. I mean, SBG franchises in the United States have excelled with this program because they are very very uh, excellent at their business practices. Yeah, uh, Travis uh, Davis and uh, his wife Kisa out of uh, SBG um, in Montana. They are they are phenomenal. They have a business sort of pod a vlog on Facebook, which I highly recommend. Hmm, okay, it looks really good. And well, yeah, because you know that's the other thing too. And this really hit home with me at the end of the program. I was standing around looking at all the people who had finished the whole program, and you're looking at this gym full of people going. These people have gotten up at 7 a.m. for five months, five days a week, and come to this thing. These people are ready to keep doing this. I yes. mean, they're, you almost have to make it you, – you'd have to put more of an effort to keep them out than you would to just keep them coming. And so, so yeah, it's a, it's a great, great opportunity for a gym. So that's one of the opportunities for the gym, too, because these people come back to us and they say, well, when does the next one start? Or yeah. um, how quickly can I send them to be a full-time member? Right? Yeah, right, and right. And so we're all about that, right? It's all about the economic economic these gyms if they nurture the hell out of these people um they get to keep new customers yeah all right well very cool well monday uh, starts our uh, new season here in uh uh las vegas i'm already trying to train my body to get up early that's that's one of my side We're training at seven it's not that early also everyone can message me on instagram about it as well yes yep. yeah did you just say seven wasn't early yes Hey, our first season, we trained at 5 a.m. every day, and I didn't even have a car. I used to have to ride my bike for an hour 20 to get to the gym every day. Don't tell me that 7 a.m. is early. Uphill both That's ways. Yeah. 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 With and one so, leg, yeah. and my tire was flat. Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. going to say, uh, if you guys ever do a PM, uh, <laughs> I went to Warrior. <laughs> I don't there. know if you'd be a suitable applicant, Frank, but we could make I can help about coaching. Yeah. Yeah. But coaching at 7 a.m., I, I would be the horror, the worst coach because my personality doesn't kick in until about 11.30 noon. Like, oh, even okay. when I first come yeah. to train, like, I'm pretty quiet, you know? Yeah. And then as practice goes on or as the day is, is moving, I start to wake up and uh, a little bit more tired. We have never taped the show that early. I think no. nine was the earliest and I made sure I was up like an hour before pounding monster yeah, right. drinks. So, so what about this? So what if you went out the whole night before and then that was the last thing you did before going to bed? That's true. I guess we do you know, switch up perspective. Do you know when I did morning radio, just that's what I did. Yeah. I trained my body to where I would go to, I'd stay up all night and I'd go to bed at 10 a.m. or whatever time I got off the air. It's horrible. But see, the thing with Frank is, though, you 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 have to give him a 30 minute like um, pregame show to get <laughs> out of bed. Like, because I've shared hotel rooms with him before, and it's like, yeah. if we're going to get up at 10, you tell him at 9 30 because there's a, he has to do a couple trial runs to get out of bed, and there's some <laughs> kind of rolling back and forth and yeah. some grunting and there groaning is. and everything. I sit at the, I every morning get up, and it looks like I'm contemplating life. I'm just waiting for my body to start turning on. I just sit there in the bed, <laughs> staring at the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Put one foot down, like okay, I don't think it'll buckle. All right, put the next foot down, like all right, cool, we're making progress. We'll take so everyone wants to be a fighter, right? Yeah. <laughs> In about five minutes, I'll be pissing. Thank God. Let's not use Frank to advertise the program. No, no, no. no. Let's uh, Jesse tell everybody how to follow you on social media if they got questions for you and all that kind of oh, stuff. Oh yeah, Miss yeah. Jesse Jess on everything. On Just everything. Me. Anything about Whipped Warrior? Mm -hmm. Please don't send me dick pics. All right. Okay, well I made that mistake once. I've apologized <laughs> for it, and I don't know why you have I to keep bringing it up. I wasn't directly referring to you, Richard. No. Is All that right. really a big problem? Every female, Jesus, that sucks. Yeah. I, I get, I get wait, more wait, people wait, trying wait, to wait. fight me than dick pics. Sent I actually out. got my own. <laughs> Did you send it to me? Because, well, <laughs> no, no. I'm confused. Well, I got some guy that some gay guy was like just trying to, I don't know, like. <laughs> 
I guess, yeah, hey, I guess you don't know if you don't try, you know what I mean? Sure, like, to see right. if I would, you know, buy it and, like, sent some pictures. And the other thing was, I was like, it's funny. I wonder if gay men do this. Because as a straight guy, I did it. The guy sent me the photo, and I looked. I was like, oh, my dick's bigger than his. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't as offended. Now, had he had a huge dick, you know what I mean? I probably would have been like, the fuck, man? This is bullshit. What are you doing? <laughs> So, as a, I always wonder that. So, that, since then, I'm like, I wonder if gay men ever do that. Like, when they hit on each other and they show each other dick, like, I wonder, is there still that, that part of being a man where it's like, well, I have to have the bigger dick? You know what I mean? Like, you know, like, uh, and yeah. like is that a deal breaker? I don't know. That's a good question. I'm yeah. sure it gets pretty technical. Yeah, right. I'm willing to bet. <laughs> yeah. Who becomes the alpha? Who becomes the alpha? <laughs> yeah, maybe uh, so. I don't know. We'll uh, we'll do uh, we'll do a little research on that. I uh, yeah. Have no, fun with that, Richard. The, the main uh, the main function that I serve for Frank, where that's concerned, is talking him out of putting stuff out there. That's really I what got a I. Good feel, uh, yeah. There's always cause I think of funny shit all the time, but not everybody <laughs> else thinks it's funny. Like, so okay, he thinks. Okay, look, he just saved. Odell Beckham's life, right? Or not, or not or no, uh, Lamar, Lamar, Odom. Lamar Odom, sorry. Lamar Odom's life, right? So I'm driving in the car as he's telling me what's going on. I'm sitting there, and I, and I, I called him back. I'm like, hey, man, I really got a good idea for a tweet. He goes, what? I'm all, is it too early to change it to a party like Odell? Instead of like you know, Odom or whatever, instead of saying a party like a rock star. And he's like, Frank, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> said Frank in fact, I can even hear him doing the... Yeah. The head shake <laughs> over on the other end of the line going, Frank, that is a horrible idea. Yeah, Frank's, they don't know if the guy's going to live. I'm like, but that's where you take risk. Yeah. Go! <laughs> Frank's saying this as he can clearly hear in the back, we're losing him. Yeah. We're losing <laughs> him. He's, no, no, he's like probably 10 feet away from the guy on the phone. And I'm like, uh, so hence why I don't have social media on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thanks for coming in studio, guys. Uh, great meeting you guys, and good to see Very you nice. again, Jesse. So, uh, so we're going to see you on Monday? See me on Monday. Yeah, right. Absolutely, and 7 a.m., and then we'll chart our progress. You know, we enjoyed talking about it last season, so we'll, uh, we'll have it's a nice thing about having the podcast is we kind of keep a little running uh, log of uh, journal of how everything's going. So uh, that's that. All right, now we've got, uh, or I've got my visit with Alima Lay McFarland. We're going to end uh, this episode with that. I did chat with her uh, earlier this morning talking about her uh, Bellator flyweight title defense uh, this weekend. So we'll conclude with that. Thanks, everybody, for joining us in studio, and uh, we'll see you guys soon. Joining us now is Alima Lay McFarland, the Bellator women's flyweight champion. She's going to be in action defending her title against Veda Ortega this Saturday night at Bellator 220, exclusively on DAZN, also in action in the main event. Rory McDonald putting his welterweight title on the line against John Fitch. Phil Davis taking on Liam McGarry. Benson Henderson taking on Adam Piccolotti. And uh, Alima, welcome back to the show. I have to apologize in advance. Uh, my partner, Frank Mir is not up with me this early, so you just get me one on one. But he he sends his regards. How are you doing? I am good. I'm just um, sitting in my room, uh, basking in the in the cameras and interviews I have to do this morning. Exactly the way I woke up. That's incredibly coincidental. Yeah. <laughs> Um, let's talk about your opponent. You know, Ortega has this five and two record, but that record's a little deceptive. I mean, every fight she's involved in is a firefight. So do you, from your perspective, do you think maybe she's flying a little bit under the radar, uh, in this fight as a challenger? Oh, totally. And you actually took the words right out of my mouth. Like I've been saying in every single interview that her five and two record is really deceiving because every single one of her fights has been all-out wars. Mm. And the two that she did lose were really close and actually controversial losses. Um, so, yeah, I think she is, has been a dark horse of the division since its inception. And, uh, yeah, if you, if you guys don't know Vita, who Vita is, uh, then you're probably a casual fan because, um, she's one of the most exciting fighters in our division. You think she's going to be able to resist coming out, firing, and taking chances? I mean, it seems like that would be maybe a more smart strategy against you to be a little more cautious, but it seems like that would also go against her nature. Yeah, you know, I've been kind of, um, I've been kind of trying to figure that out. Like, what is she going to do, especially especially because it's a five-round fight this time, you know? Can mm -hmm. she come out? Done blazing and keep that uh, level of intensity for all five rounds. Um, but yeah, part of me thinks that she's not because of that, uh, and because like yeah, if she comes out guns blazing, she leaves herself up uh, open for a takedown. No. Yet, 
on the other hand, I'm like, but it's beat up. When has she not ever done that before? Right. Yeah. So yeah, I, re- I really don't know. I guess I guess we'll find out. You know, when that bell rings. Now, conversely to that, I've I've heard you say before you consider yourself a slower starter, but is this the kind of opponent that could potentially lure you out of that tendency, or do you you think you're too calculated for that? Mm, I I think I I think I'm really gonna read her vibes. Like I, uh, man, I don't know. I I think I am calculated for sure, and so I'm I'm probably yeah I'm gonna read her vibes and see what uh see what she gives me i can i'm i'm okay with going all five rounds also you know i know I've, I've been there before i can do it um but i'm also okay with finishing in the first round you know i like it's interesting that all of my fights are different finishes in different rounds you know like i have two first round finishes but then i also have two like third round finishes you know so um like recently in my title fights, I I have been a slower starter, and I think it's because I have in the back of my mind like, oh, I have five rounds, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, yeah, I think that's probably part of the reason why I've been I've been uh, getting later finishes in the in championship fight. Well, speaking um, of no, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, 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 go, go. I, yeah, that was it. Oh, no, it's okay. I was actually going to ask you a follow-up on those late finishes because this is interesting. I mean, you're known for your submission skills. You defended this title three straight uh, times now uh, with uh, three straight uh, with, with three fairly late submissions, this is what I was going to ask you about. There's two in the third round. There's one in the fifth. And, you know, statisticians will say that uh, submissions become less likely as the fight goes on. But does that math just not apply to 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu? How, how, what, what's with that uh, anomaly there? Wow, I didn't, I didn't know that that was... Uh even a statistic yeah a lot um, of times i think just because fighters get slippery and things like that you know you see yeah, especially yeah. yeah it's less arm bars especially stuff like that but uh i mean that that hasn't seemed to be too yeah. much of a problem for you maybe because it was never pointed out i don't know you, you seem to be doing just fine with it yeah <laughs> yeah that's the first time i've ever heard that before but um no that, that definitely makes sense you know fighters get more tired mm-hmm. and, you know they get slippery but um you know, I our our tenth planet jujitsu system was created with MMA in mind. You know, Eddie has literally said that that he created this system um, for fighting. So I think that this is the best uh, jujitsu system for MMA, and I do have the best ground game for MMA in the division. And so, yeah, I'm not worried. Like, I yeah, I have been able to get the submission in the first minute or the last minute of the fight. You know, so I'm not. I'm not worried about um, what part of the fight. Uh, if a submission is there, I'm going to take it because that's what I was trained to do. That's what our team is trained to do. My jiu-jitsu coach, Richie Boogeyman Martinez, you know, he's one of the best submission specialists in the world, and he always he always drives it into us that we are a submission-based school. So we rarely do points tournaments, you know, and when we roll, uh, when we practice at night and we roll, like, we roll for the finish. We're not rolling for position. So, um, yeah, I think just, just having a coach like that and a, and a mindset like that has really helped me find the finish, the finish anywhere. Last thing for you, um, I, I have to ask this question. I follow you on Instagram, and uh, I have I have two rescue pit bulls myself, and I noticed uh, – <laughs> I noticed that you were not the only uh, champion recently in your household. I, I noticed that your uh, your rescue pit uh, won a costume contest with you dressed as a pineapple. So it, it, it oh, I, yeah. I guess the pressure's on you for uh, to continue the the uh, the very successful period there in the McFarland household. Oh my gosh! Yeah, so he is my pineapple pit. I call, I'm the pineapple princess, and he's the pineapple pit. Right. And, uh, we won a costume contest for. Meals on Wheels, the chair you walk, and um, yeah, that's my that's my baby. I got him after I got him after my first title defense against uh, Lada Alejandra, and um, yeah, I mean, I'm so I like I'm I'm saying that this fight I'm fighting for him because if I win, I'm getting a house, and uh, because he needs a backyard, I can't have him in uh, pooped up in the apartment all day long training. So I'm freaking buying him a house. So that he can have his own yard, and then I'll get him a sibling. Right. But, uh, yeah, so he's spoiled. 
I like that, Alima. You know, we have a sign in our house that says, uh, we work hard so our dogs can have a better life. I can tell you yes. subscribe to that oh, theory, yes. right? <laughs> Listen. Yeah, for sure. I need that sign. Best of luck to you, and uh, we'll be watching you Saturday night exclusively on his own Bellator 220, defending that women's flyweight title. Thanks again for the time, and we'll look forward to speaking to you next time. Thanks, Richard. It was a pleasure. Thank you.